Hello and welcome to the Chromacast with your host, Chroma Cosmos. I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Hobbs, who has been a lifelong friend and is really, really awesome. Mr. Hobbs, how are you doing today? How's it going, everyone? <laughs> oh, I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> the, I, we were having a discussion earlier, and you mentioned how, like, there's always a new experience in VR. Like, um, there always will be an. Oh, sorry if I'm actually interrupting. Oh no, no, um, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, the experience uh, is, as I would put it, I guess maybe, it's ever changing. Especially in VR. And as you mentioned before in your previous podcast, um, which I had the pleasure of actually watching. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's no problem. Uh, even with, with, I guess if you, as you put it, you had eight months in the game. You kind of mentioned that it's either, was it ever, was it always ever, ever changing as well? I feel like it is. Or was it always the same? <laughs> I, I feel like there's, but there's something always different. Yes. Or at least that's the way I kind of see it also as well. Um, there's always something different, even though you kind of do the same instances over and over again, jumping on the same world, just either mostly, I guess, if you would be saying, eh, looking at yourself in the mirror the majority of the time. Yeah. One of the things that... um when I first started using VR was some of the habits that people were doing, like looking at mirrors, mm. because you're looking at something that is that is not you, or using an avatar that is the complete opposite of, of what you look like in real life. I don't think it's an escape, or it's more like a, I don't know, an adaptation for something beyond reality. I guess that's why it's called virtual reality. Mm, true, true. I know we've actually touched up on this uh, subject before, or I think it would have been maybe last month or two months ago. But I kind of believe that the characters that most people use or the characters we use are either a representation of how we feel in on the inside, so to speak. That's uh, one regardless way to as to it. whether, yeah, regardless as to whether or not you're actually, oops, sorry about that, uh, <laughs> whether you're either using a persona, whether you're using either, of course, a cat, wolf boy, or whether or not you're using an elf as well. I mean, I could still take off the ears either way, and that'd still be the same. <laughs> but... but... I think the avatars are more personality based than anything. That's just my view. I'm not sure if the rest of the public would actually agree with this, but well, to each their own. Do to each do. their own. Absolutely. I think um, it also depends on the mood in which you're in. Um, mm -hmm. If you're feeling. And that's the cool thing about avatars. It's like if you're feeling kind of cute, you can even if you're a, like a masculine guy, you can you can be <laughs> <laughs> like a like a like a like a female avatar in just like that, and still feel I don't know feel cute for lack of better words could you could in my last podcast i was talking about a second skin do you feel that this avatar that you use is a second skin of yours mm, not necessarily well i mean besides the long ears that's going to be a horse but the only part that's going to be a second skin anything else besides this uh no not really. The character is who I am and who I could be, yet only choose to show myself as only on here. Anything else outside of VR is just like, okay, you, I am, I, I am as well who I am. 
that's not gonna change. For sure. Do you mind if I tell the uh, the viewers that I know I know you in real life. We've known each other in real oh. life for 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 a lot for a few <laughs> for a while now actually. And I think it was since 2010 around there. Yeah, yeah, it was. And if I could, I could, have, if I could have a confession, when I first joined VR, mm. I thought that I was gonna, my personality was gonna be a little bit different. Like, since I have a, okay, now I'm a different uh, person, if you will. Now I'm Chroma. I'm gonna be able to get away with things a little bit easier. Like, joke neatly, <laughs> and like just have like wreck havoc however as time went on i realized that you know how i am in vr is, is pretty much how i am the same in real life and i think the same thing can be said about you especially i mean i know you in mm -hmm. real life you're you're kind and always listening um whenever i need someone to talk to you're a very wholesome person, <laughs> Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> Thank you. Both, both in real life, and and VR. Uh, but I guess adding to that, most people don't, most people don't really need to actually change any aspect of themselves, personality-wise. But. I do understand that some people actually also come on here to do their quote unquote role play. Yeah. And that would be the only aspect that changes. But I don't want to say that it necessarily turns into a problem because eventually it starts bleeding out afterwards. Because let's face it, some people actually do. Um, they they have but they have better self control than others. For sure. And at, a, and at a certain point, I guess, maybe there's that line that kind of like ends up being blurred eventually. Yeah. Um, I think the only time I've ever actually felt where in the VR kind of like the VR world kind of like comes into the um, actual world. I sort of like self uh, quoted this as a bleeding effect. Only to a certain extent, uh, of course, the bleeding effect, as I mentioned to some people, that uh, it's a term that actually derives from the Assassin's Creed uh, uh, terminal, I guess, uh, Assassin's Creed world, of course, which we have <laughs> we have nothing to do with at this point. Um, the term for the the term for the series actually explained to where. A person would actually jump into a machine, relive their um, relive their ancestors' memories, and if they actually stayed in the machine for too long, certain effects could actually be seen where they would actually see uh, visual hallucinations um, into everyday parts of their life, which to some extent actually made the user mad. Now, I'm not saying this as a as a way to say that okay visually everything is being melded together no 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 no. i'm saying like sensory wise um i guess maybe just by sense uh, touch of sense like for some reason like if you were to move your arm or it's, it's happened to me before where i would actually reach out for something but it would feel for me like it's not my own appendage it's not my limb I think that's only ever happened maybe around the first two times when I'm actually, I actually came out of VR, especially with a headset. Do you get, um, did you get motion sickness? I know that's one of the, uh, one of the, um, how do you say, um, side effects from using VR. A lot of, like, motion sickness mm. is what I get here a lot. Uh, a lot about no actually I haven't been I haven't had any bouts of motion sickness or at Same. least not to the strongest extent 
only time I've actually ever felt something like that would I guess would be um when I think it was one of these worlds. It was supposed to be the chill hangout or chill chill house or something like that. Um along the back along the backyard there's actually a swing set that actually like pretty much just of cover uh moves back and forth. But while your avatar is actually sitting on it and you're looking at the sky at an angle uh at an angle. Yes. Your body is, I guess, is kind of expecting you to be either sensing wind or to be sensing a little bit of motion. But since there's no movement at all whatsoever, which I feel very is very odd, um, that is the only time I've actually gotten close to motion sickness. You're absolutely and right. And I believe to, and I believe, sorry. No, and fine. I believe for anyone that's actually tried out this world, uh, test pilots, um, you can actually fly your own either jet plane, fly a helicopter, fly whatever it is that you can. If your character is actually moving at a fast enough pace and you're doing so many whirls, so many uh, barrel rolls if you want to, you, there is a possibility like someone could actually get motion sickness that way. I know which world, which world you're talking about, the one with uh, the rockets on your <laughs> on your hands, right? Yeah, I think oh, it's that one. that one made me sick. It, it's not in a bad way, but I I get what you what you mean <laughs> by by motion sickness. I I know sometimes my avatar will like be trailing behind me, and so like you'll see the model like <laughs> flickering in and out of existence. I'm like, this is this is just this is just too much. I know which one you're talking about. Mm. I feel like the brain tries to make connections with what the what the eye and the hand are seeing. Like, for example, I'm, like if I try um, touching this r- rug enough, will I start see- feeling a rug? Or maybe I, I I just won't feel anything. I know phantom touch. That's what it's called. And earlier you mentioned that you have. Um, phantom touch, but on a smaller, smaller scale. Um, not to the point where a few other of my friends actually, they could actually feel a punch. They can feel someone being poking them. Whoa! They could feel someone like touching their face. Like not for me, it's not like that. For me, it's more of a. Let's 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 say if someone were to actually to put their put their hand on me. I'm not going to feel their hand. I'm only going to feel what's, what I guess would be for me, heat. That's it. Do you mind if I try that right now? Go ahead. Do you feel heat? It's like right there I could actually feel heat. Whoa. But I wouldn't feel any fingertips. I wouldn't feel anything else. Oh, wait. Of course I could feel it. My hand in real life is actually... <laughs> It wouldn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say if I were to actually, if someone were to actually to poke me with a uh, poke me with their finger, like that I, only to that certain small point would I actually feel heat. Damn. Anything else besides that, I'm not gonna feel anything. Yeah, because I tried I tried to hit your knee earlier with a, with an umbrella, and you you <laughs> <laughs> apart from the false reaction <laughs> you you didn't feel it but do you remember the anime dot hack sign there was an episode actually the first episode where one of the for those of you who don't know dot hack sign is an anime where the entire entirety of the show takes place in virtual reality anyways at the first episode one of the characters gets angry and slaps the main character but the main character feels it like mm-hmm. like an actual slap, and out uh, and uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but the character has been immersed and feels everything in this world that they're that they're in. As far as it goes, I've seen I've felt like little brushes, like minuscule phantom touches, for lack of better words. Hmm. Like if there was um, like a fan blowing real close to my face, I would, I would feel that. Real small stuff like oh. that. 
Yeah. So it hasn't come to the point where for you you could actually feel someone like actually either slapping slapping either your thigh, slapping an arm or anything. You don't not, feel the blow, right? Not yet, no. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> not anytime soon. I will say this though, whenever um someone is real close to me, I, I do have a tendency to kind of like back up like in real life. And I don't know, even though people walk through people and oh, here all mm. the time, I still get that sensation of um, personal boundaries. Mm, How about yourself? I think I know what you mean. Um, rarely, only on rare occasions, I, I'm not sure whether or not I need to be completely focused on the person for them to or at least for me to notice their presence, like being really close, or either I'm zoned out at the end of the day and I'm completely exhausted from work or from whatever reason. Um, again, only on rare occasions do I ever actually feel like someone's like present. Yeah. You know, one thing I've noticed is that I still have energy sometimes, even after a hard day of work, because it feels like, okay, that person is tired, but Chroma's ready. Chroma just woke up, for lack of a better word, so he feels energized. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's like, so, I'm listening. Um... So when you say Chroma is ready to, Chroma, when you say Chroma is ready to go, when he's already hyped up, he's good to go on to, like say the next the next project or some other small thing. Like you say, you caught your second wind. Are you good for the rest of the night or? Yeah. Mostly. How long would it actually last? Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. But I'll be honest. Sometimes mm -hmm. the other person. Is tired, so Chroma will be tired as well. But for most of the time, whenever <laughs> Chroma gets on, usually um, Chroma is is ready to go. I'm I'm ready to go. Like I feel rested. <laughs> Cause like for a second, it kind of ma you made it sound like you kind of tried to match energy levels like with with anyone else that was around you. Oh, for sure. Has, have you, how do you, from the time you started using VR to where you are right now, like, has it, how do you, how, how has it been? I, actually, if, if you'll mind, uh, it's been a few months now, right? Since you've, since you've been on. What are your thoughts uh, about it? In total... In total, I would say I've been, or at least for the most part in the beginning, I've been kind of on and off. Because initially I started off with playing VR chat on desktop. Of course, with our mutual friend Blue. Yeah, if he ever sees this. Hi. <laughs> shout out to Blue. Uh, shout out. Love. We love you, Blue. And the, the guy you love. Hugs. <laughs> But um, I think it was more towards the, I guess what was supposed to be the start of the Uganda Knuckles uh, yeah. time. Uh, man, that was something else. <laughs> that was really something else. I, I was on VR chat at least for that part, for the total of two months, maybe, maybe a close to four months. And then pretty much life just carried me away from there. And only until recently, um, I would actually say maybe mid-February is when I actually got my headset. From there on, I finally understood when they said that it is a very different experience. Oh, yeah. And they were not kidding for that point. 
mm, from the way we're seeing things right now uh, visually it's more far far more immersive for a virtual reality person than it is for a desktop user because of course they can still see the screen and they can still see everything else around them but once the headset's on, once the earphones are on, whatever headset anyone else is wearing, if they're using over your headphones as well, that's it. Outside world is shut off. You're only stuck on. You're only like focusing on the world that's in front of you right now. Absolutely. I mentioned in the last episode, like it, it blew, it blew my mind, <laughs> and, <laughs> and. I I know in, I mentioned in the last episode, I speculated where we might be in the next, who knows, next few months, next few years. I mean, this is still kind of, I think we're still seeing VR in its infancy, and we have yet to get to that point where it's indiscernible from reality. Is what I think is what I'm really curious and what we will see. In our lifetime. What's next, you know? Well, I mean, they have been they have been hinting at various other products that'll actually imitate, uh, so to speak. Uh I guess in a sense uh, the sense of touch. They're already coming out with I think it's supposed to be I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a back plate or a front plate. Oh that you can actually yeah. start feeling it. The hap- haptic feedback. Like, um, it's it's a slow process. It's a I guess I, I guess it's a crawl towards an advanced uh, sense uh, sensory input. But we're we're getting there. It's I I would give it maybe about another ten years, another fifteen years before it solidifies. Probably, before it solidifies, but that's me probably being optimistic, a little too optimistic on that one. Uh, in reality, more than likely, it would actually take us another 30 years, uh, 40 years for that. Uh, I think we could I see mean, it I know in the next five recently, years. They've actually come up with... Oh, in the next that, five that, years. That's my guesstimate. <laughs> you're, you're probably more realistic, and I'm mm. taking the more um, optimistic approach. <laughs> I like to say it's gonna be in here in the next five years, and we can start a pre-order right now. No, I mean I still have yet, I still have yet to get myself the full body trackers, bro. What people do with those full body trackers is is mind blowing. <laughs> I want to be part of it. I, you go ahead. Seriously, seriously, kudos to the, kudos to the people who can actually dance and those things to I those people to who could dance you 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 guys are the best you're, so, you're something else something else you're something else you're in your own genre there i catch you guys at the void and you guys are so much fun to watch <laughs> like the only thing i could do is probably I, there was a vid, there was a video on youtube that i was watching and how like if you're just wearing a headset then the way it tracks your body is as if you were standing straight because it's your head and then your pelvis, and then that's it. So, if you catch me at the void, you you'll probably see me like just dancing with my head and back straight. But <laughs> p- those body trackers, man, let you go full on dancer mode. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think next year by probably. Again, by June, by June or by uh, early July, the I think the, I think the company the company's name is Tundra. They should be coming out with a uh, with full body trackers for honestly. I, I figured this is a cheap price, uh, three hundred dollars. The receivers apparently can actually hold up to well, they can support six. Um, I want to I want to call them nodes because uh, I, I I figure that's what that most people would actually just call them but seriously I, i'm i'm thinking of investing on one of those dude go for it let me know how it, let me <laughs> let me know when you when you order them 
and I'll I'll track with you. <laughs> what I've seen a lot of people do is purchase one one puck or one one tracker and then eventually buy another one uh, over time. It's probably this is probably the route I'm gonna take. Yeah, I at least for the most at least for the VR trackers right now, I feel like that's actually like it's very expensive. I know. Oh yeah. I know some people might not agree with that, but some I know the majority of them will. Uh, not that they. Uh, how would I say it? I don't. I don't want to say not that they should agree, but it. I guess it depends on person to person, but I right now I will I'll just wait. I'll put it off on the back burner. Hey. Why lie? I'll probably do the same. <laughs> 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 I told you about that time I accidentally ordered. <laughs> this is an embarrassing story, but I'm I'm willing to share with you. I told you about the time I ordered um straps thinking they were trackers. <laughs> oh, geez. I told you. So, so no, I, you you didn't actually. Even. I I was, I was I was, I had my phone open. I was like, let me let me just see if the price for these trackers have changed. And then I saw, what I thought, this, is, it was a, <laughs> it was my part. I should have read the detail. Chroma didn't read the details. I thought the straps <laughs> were the trackers. I'm like, bro. $39 for a tracker, sign me in. <laughs> I placed my order and they came and it was just the straps. Oh my I, God. I, I embarrass myself sometimes. <laughs> but needless to say, um, I returned them and I will be getting <laughs> <laughs> the trackers when I have well, the means. Uh, um, I mean, at least you didn't make the rookie mistake of of trying to respawn the world, but only respawning yourself. <laughs> I'm never gonna live that one down. That's for sure. Tell us about it. Only, only if you, if you don't mind. Um. But if it's a, if it's a story, best. Oh, I mean, it's not. It's not really much of a story per se. It's just a, it's just an experience. I know. I can't remember the name of the. I can't remember the name of the world. All I remember about it was the fact that it was a uh, sort of an old, an old, an old wooden mansion, yeah. literally covered from. Well, at least the walls were covered with nothing but portraits of cats. Um, some diners or some dining halls actually had uh, pictures of knights on them. Huh. But of course, certain um, there was a, we missed a step in that world. It's kind of like an escape world, a puzzle world, so to speak. We missed a step, or we missed an item, to unlock a door. Uh, but the instance actually turned out that it was actually bugged. So I was told, of course, by our friend Blue, that you're probably gonna need to restart the world. Okay, sure. Now, of course, me opening up the menu, I literally clicked just on respawn, and I started back at the beginning of the oh, world. Oh, no. He comes... He, he... Of course, Blue comes over, and he's just looking at me, <laughs> shaking his head. And the next thing I see is him just falling on the floor, <laughs> laughing his ass off. Yeah, you, you don't. Now, <laughs> Go ahead, continue. Now, uh, whenever it com whenever it comes to people just um, laugh, I guess laughing at my expense, it's like I kind of really don't take kindly to it. But then again, at the same time, I'm reflecting on the moment and like, yeah, you know what? I probably should have asked first. I sh probably should have asked first before I actually even respond. Well, to be fair, no <laughs> one told you. <laughs> No, no one tells you these things. You know that's one thing I noticed but, in VR chat. Like no one tells you these things, unless they're they're really wholesome, they're real kind. They give you a heads up. 
I mean, if a random person is willing to help you, okay. But at the same time, yeah. since we've actually known each other for so, if if we've known each other since we've known each other for so long, it was like I should have expected more of myself, and it was actually my fault for not actually saying anything at all either. Uh, it was dumb of me to actually to assume that me responding would actually restart the whole world. But of course, um. Me being the type of person that either overthinks things or just doesn't think at all and just does everything uh, without even bothering of like of, of trying of trying to guess like what thing is, well, what what is what. I guess a shoot first, ask questions mentality. I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission, and I'd rather just wing it sometimes and <laughs> sometimes i i have to experience it so that so it'll stick in here so i'll remember but it's like you gotta get to that uh somehow you gotta get to that point where it's like okay i'm just shutting everything off i'm doing it that's it no no it's and or what i think overthinking is kind of productive as well well it's um i take that back well mm-hmm. over th- Thinking is good, but overthinking, um, if it's hindering you from actually doing something, is is counterproductive. At least Mm -hmm. in my opinion, at least that's what I think. If it's hindering you from doing something, what do you think? It, um, of course it's... I mean, it is. It it can be detrimental, at least overthinking. Um, I've only heard of instances where certain people actually they've they've actually overthought things so much that they actually have anxiety attacks. Um, I mean, if that if that's the case with some people, I mean, the most it would it would actually be, it's nice for them to actually, I guess, to have someone reach out to them so they sort of help them out uh but it can be productive only to certain aspects i mean if you're more of a theoretical person of course sure that'll help you out in the long run short run or in any possible way because i mean sometimes you need to think of every possibility like what could this action actually do what kind of consequences will there be because i mean but then again, I mean, there's that saying, no good deed goes unpunished, so it's a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't type hey. of deal. Yeah. It's a catch-22. Do you ever hear about that phrase? <laughs> heard it before, but I've, I've heard the instance, no, not the instance, I've heard the definition of it, or the explanation behind the whole thing. Um... Not, I'm a little rusty on the whole thing though. It's it's basically a um. It's a scenario in which. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's it's kind of a loose loose situation. Well, not necessarily loose loose situation, but it's it's very conditional. Like, the outcome is conditional, even if you go both ways. So. A catch twenty two is kind of like you can go forward, but in order for that to happen, something else has to happen. It's it's basically a conditional outcome. I'm explaining it really, really bad. I should I should probably be looking it up. Mm. But it's like it can't. You're making it sound like a side quest. Like C can't happen. It kind of is. C can't happen unless B happens first, and that's how A gets to C. It's 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 pretty conditional. Mm. But yeah, like making going mm. back to um overthinking and decisions. I think mm-hmm. making a calculated um action I I can see I can see where you're coming from. For sure. Have you ever thought about 3D modeling? Um, I, well, would you say, are you saying, like, 
actually 3D modeling or creating a 3D model? Creating a 3D model. Because there was this app that I um, recently got mm-hmm. into called Vroid. Have you heard of Vroid? I don't think I have, actually. Okay. If if you don't have any experience with Blender or 3D modeling software, I, I totally recommend um, looking into Vroid. Like, you... I haven't uploaded anything with it yet, but it's basically an avatar um, creating software, and you get to it's 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 like professional presets, but it is so much easier than than Blender. I I guess trying to tie it back to overthinking. Whenever I got to Blender, and I don't know if it's the perfectionist mentality, but when I was creating this avatar, I wanted to make sure that the nose was perfect, the hair was symmetrical. I was just overthinking it, and I didn't want to go to Blender just for that reason. But whenever I was using a Vroid, it was kind of like, oh, man, you know, why not use it if it makes things easier? Like, if, if the outcome is still what I want, like, why not, you know? Mm-hmm. So, Vroid has a... or. Vroid can actually simplify the process of actually yes. making and creating a 3D model. Yeah. Huh. That's kind of that's kind of bad actually because I mean most people usually say the same thing for Blender and Unity also as well. That it's already simple as it is. Oh man, I think I have a smaller brain in that case. But I guess <laughs> going back to what we were saying earlier and overthinking, I think you said a key word right mm. now, and that is simplification. Simplify. Simplify. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the word know. of the day. Simplify. Simplify. <laughs> Simplicity is bliss. Oh, Wouldn't you my... agree, Mr. Hobbs? Uh, simplicity can be bliss, but it tends to be it tends to be monotonous after a certain uh, amount of time then that's where this most people true. tend to complicate their own lives because they want a little bit of a thrill what's your thrill Mr. Hobbs my thrill your thrill I don't I don't think I necessarily have a thrill I just I don't know. I, 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 it's it's a bit of a mix for me. Because I, I like I going to tall be... buildings in VR and looking down and getting those butterflies. Like I get uh, a thrill from that. Oh no, I got it. It's like, like for me, I, I should not gotta, be looking I down, to... <laughs> but I still I am. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I think for me it would actually be just be. It doesn't really matter if it's VR or. It's because it's this is this instance has actually happened to uh, like even playing games. Uh, on a console, on my computer as well. Uh, just jumping off a building and <laughs> looking down at the ground just coming up at you. I can feel my stomach just come Same. up at me. What is... Same. <laughs> I think that would be the closest thing to, to a thrill, but IRL-wise, eh, not much of anything, actually. I mean, besides... Me just speeding through the streets, like not literally, not literally speeding through the streets. I'll, I'll be just the first five miles per hour over the speed limit. I do, Mr. Hobbs. I go, not five, but six, sometimes seven, above the speed limit. <laughs> and if anybody finds <laughs> where I live, please don't report me. But you know, I barely realized this the other day that insurance for car insurance. Is more expensive for males than it is for females, and I asked my friend, "Why is that?" And according to him, the statistics, uh, the statistics are, the men drive more reckless than women. And as soon as he said that, got me thinking. You know, he's not wrong <laughs> about that. I mean, I was. I, I mean, like, I'm a safe driver most of the time. I. I Arguably, but every now and then, you know, I like to put on my Eurobeat music and 
go a little fast sometimes. Of course, I'm still. See, that's the thing. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you catch a beat, or you sometimes you catch a song, or you hear a song that just motivates. Yeah, you, you just, just feel it. Actually, energizes you so much. Yeah. And yet, you just can't help but actually, literally, uh, like press, of course, press on the gas a little bit more than usual. That's my thrill, right there. <laughs> In addition to looking down buildings and feeling butterflies, it's. <laughs> I mean, I. Not that I'm racing, but you know, you got the music. You're you clocked out of work. It's kind of like let's go home. <laughs> That's oh my god, the case, of, the case of the Fridays though. Sometimes oh I swear. my goodness, you have no idea. Yes. <laughs> I I don't know why. I kind of feel like doing that sometimes, especially for a Monday. Just playing, of course, the song Blue Monday on my way to work. <gasps> because... I know that. New Order, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, New Order. Yeah. Actually, please don't, please don't strike me. Please don't copyright that. Um, I hope I don't get this video taken no, off. Maybe. But yeah, Blue Monday. <laughs> I know that is... A cool song to clock into work to like feel like a badass it, you like you take out your imaginary cigarette and you just toss in like you're just clocking into work and the lyrics are going into your head it's kind of like you feel like the you feel like the anti-hero in a movie i'm sorry i'm interrupting i'm, I'm going <laughs> off on a tangent here no 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 it's, it's good it's good I, like, I, it's good to actually to add on to it but no funny for me it was for me that's a mindset would be more of okay you know what i I relaxed, I relaxed on the weekend, but it never felt like enough. So now that I'm going into work, especially early in the morning, it's kind of a bit of a drag. So I kind of need a little bit of a funk to sort of get me moving, sort of remind me of the week, I guess, so to yeah. speak, that's actually coming along the way. Because I swear to God, it can be bad. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean... To anyone, to anyone out there, I'm pretty sure some of actually, some have actually felt it before. There are those weeks that they pass by so quickly, but mostly because either you're very busy or because you're focused on something else. Those kind of, those kind of drain you, but you're a little bit more satisfied at the end of the week because you did something. Yes. Compared to the weeks where, compared to the weeks where you're pretty much just like everything is so slow there's either if for anyone that's actually working on the clinic there's no patients coming in whatsoever for anyone that's working in a department store there is no clients no customers whatsoever um or to the people out there seriously to the people in the food industry also as well you guys i swear to god you got some of you actually have hearts of fun gold i swear oh oh there heck? you are Jeez. <laughs> whoops That'll I think happen. you actually clicked on the one of the chairs. Ah! That'll happen. But, yeah, again, to the people in the food industry, some of you actually are the most patient people, I swear. Um, don't let the mistakes hold you down if you're actually committing any. It's a learning experience to some, even to the most, ex I guess, to, the, to a veteran. Um, kudos, seriously, to these people. Especially, especially right now with what's going on out in the world as well. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like at least, at least personally, I kind of feel like they get the the brunt of the majority of like us of the bad stuff that's happening out there. Who again? The people out, the people working in the food industries. I kind of feel like they get the, oh. the brunt of the brunt of like the bad part of humanity. Yes. Like, come on, dude. It's like, they, like they don't need that. They're just, like they're working their ass off or. For everyone else, like they don't, they don't need it. They don't need the. They don't need people bashing on them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you're SpongeBob but, SquarePants yeah. singing on your way to a job <laughs> like that. I mean, <laughs> all you're just doing is taking um, orders. I, I work two days in the food industry. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Never, I got I got a little um, taste of it, and I I just 
Oh man, it was such a humbling experience, I'll tell you that much. And I have nothing but respect for... I mean, I've always had respect for those people, but like, man, my respect grew more once I walked the second day. I, I, I could never <laughs> do that. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, compared to the day, compared to the weeks where it's like, it's always slow. Every every day is always a slow day, and for some reason, it just. You feel like you're stuck in a you're stuck in a mire, like you're stuck in something, but you're not going anywhere. That is a, for me that is the worst draining experience because you did nothing at all whatsoever, and that for some reason it's like, do I, do I just go on? Do I just? I don't know. Find a new purpose from within, I guess. You could do that. My grandfather. You could do that. Um. He's his 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 philosophy of life is um. He he always wants to be learning something new. Um. Every single day. And so he he's a huge fan of learning languages. So. He'll go on Google and just learn new words from different languages, be it um, Italian, Russian, or hmm. German. He, he he just feels the need to, because I, th I think, I don't know if there's research in it, but it's um, brain elasticity. Uh, don't quote me on this. I'm not a scientist, but it's keeping the brain <laughs> active because it's kind of like a muscle. In in a in a sense, you know what? Actually, I actually had a seminar. I went to a, a seminar the other day, and they were talking about a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And they were talking about how mm -hmm. having like the brain is still capable of of learning new things, even even to into age. I I think it's the comparison of the fixed mindset and the growing mindset, of course. A uh, fixed mindset uh, person's not willing to budge whatsoever. They know what they know. And it's my way or the highway. No what? Exactly. Mm. I mean, they just call them stubborn people, of course. <laughs> Compared to the person who is a growing mindset, of course, willing to take in whatever is new, uh, willing to, and they're a lot more willing to either learn or to experience something else instead. Which, of course, uh, leads to a person gaining more knowledge over the course of time. Um, but I, honestly, I, I, I would say it's actually a little, I would say it's actually uh, fairly commendable for a person to want to learn a new language, I guess, like your grandfather did. Um, but at the same time, also, I give my respects to these people who actually are willing to learn not just the language, but the culture as well of other people. Yes. Like going below the surface. And that's the, one of the cool things about mm -hmm. um, VR chat, especially, is that you're exposed to people of like different perspectives and backgrounds and um, mannerisms. And it's, it's very, very introspective for, for lack of better words. I, I mean, I guess where I'm at right now, uh, people. I guess our people, but I mean they're still diversified, but not as diversified as a hub like like VR chat where we were speaking to someone from Germany a moment ago. <laughs> and I think, um, just that having this diverse culture. Uh, Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we could actually I guess you could say like it's it's actually something to, it's something worth celebrating. Absolutely. I think as of recently, I've only ever met one person from. Actually, no, scratch that. I've already met like maybe a handful of people. One from South Africa, one from Sweden, one from of course London. 
But other than that, I think I've only actually met one person, or two people uh, from, uh, one from Russia, one from Spain. But that was like on New Year's about a few years back. Wow. Mr. Hobbs, we are closing to <laughs> 50 minutes of the podcast. <laughs> a lot more than what I expected. Um, the last episode was six <laughs> minutes, and I, truth be told, I, I didn't think it would last this long. But um, I just want to say um, thank you um, for your time. I think we're going to call it right now. Um, this world was created by Lucifer M S T I M M Star, and I guess we'll see you all in the next episode. Once again, Mr. Hobbs, thank you for joining me. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs>